Hello! Huberto! Kamusta ka? How are you? It's Uncle Albelario! Here to teach you about bye bye in. Bye bye in. The writing system of the Philippines. Like. Um. Ar Ar Arya. Actually, don't look at that. It's, um. Out of order at the moment. <laughs> we. May not have been able to join you for Easter, but we are bringing Easter to you. So today we're going to do E and I. A, E, I, O, U. E, E. E, E. E, E. So that's how you would write it in Bai Bayan. See? E. Like, Elog. It looks like water. Um, some people may write it in different kinds of scripts, but uh, you'll get to know them eventually. Um, so like, Ilog, Ilog, which means river in Filipino, and which is where we get the name for my tribe, the Tagalog. Tagalog, like Taga Ilog, meaning from the river. Um, and I think there is also, um, a friend of mine said that Iv Ivrit means like, someone from across the river, but um, I don't really know that word. But I do know that in like Aladdin and Middle Eastern fairy tales, that we have these things called ifrit, like ifriti or jinn, like the genie, like the genie of the lamp or the genie of the bottle. Um, and there are various genie dances. If you um, know how to belly dance, I, I cannot. So um, maybe one of these days, one of you little munchkins will will show us some some great dancing. <laughs> but um, yeah, one day I would like to dance like Aladdin. But till then, till then, where is my... Oh! Here we have a fishy. This is called Isda. Isda. So from the Elog, Isda. Oh, this is my friend Snow Pea. I have a sparrow friend named Chirpy, but she couldn't really um, visit us in New Jersey, so uh, we brought over a bird spirit from the colder climates to bring us some snow or just lo like lower temperatures because it's so hot in here and I, I don't like heat really like I can't even believe I'm Filipino sometimes but um, yes let's do some vocabulary words in Bai Bayan so E first we have Ibon Ibon like Ibon like the one on my head so Ibon means birdie, so that's i, ba, but instead of ba, it's bo, um, which is why it has a dot there, and then n, and the ekis, uh, the, or the, vira, the virama, means that it cancels out the automatic a at the end, so instead of ibona, it says ibon, and actually, so Philippines, um, Filipino has this weird thing, um, well actually not so weird, conjugations, um, you could conjugate a noun to sometimes be like an adjective. Um, I'm going to have to think of a better way to explain that. But in one case where we have this myth mythological creature called the Ibong Adarna, the Ibon means like an adjective and the noun is actually like the Adarna. So Ibong Adarna. So um, when we call it an Ibong, it's an NG. So... So, yeah. yeah. So then it becomes that, Ibong Adarna. So, like, like the Ibong Adarna, which features prominently in our fairy tales. Um, it's, it's part of a long, long work that I hope to one day be able to summarize and tell you so that you can enjoy um, this great bird creature of the Philippines, because we love birds. It was a bird paradise there. And furthermore, this rattle that I have here is another another bird. Uh, okay, sorry, my hands. Is another bird creature called the sare manok. The sare manok is like a like a phoenix chicken that the Philippines had. It was a dewata, meaning that we used to kind of worship it and believe that it could grant us wishes. Um, and basically, I use it to 
to call spiritual energies and to disperse negative forces and to just bring goodness and cheer and and bird magic every everywhere I go. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so happy Easter. Okay, and another word that we use in Tagalog is isa, meaning one. One, like one with the Lord, one with the world, one with each other. We are at one. We are at peace with ourselves now that we have found the love and light of the Lord and or, or humanity or just altruism or... Um, yeah, yeah, altruism, um, or, or Islam. <laughs> um, so, one, Isa. So this is kind of an interesting word. Uh, so this is how you spell it in Baibayan. So, E, E, Sa. So this is a Sa sound. Um, in, in Filipino, a lot of words are homonyms, meaning that they sound the same, but they're actually different words. And you can't really know which word it is unless if you read it within the context of the entire sentence. Um, or just, you, you know, like, try to intuit it from the person that you're speaking to or, like, the, their job function. Just look at the whole thing and um, see it within the context of the phrase. Okay. Um, we're going to have to work on props one of these days. Um, just move it, moving on. <laughs> so one of the ways that this becomes a problem is when we deal with proper names and such as Isao and, and Isaw. Um, so Isao is actually a, a scary aswang or ghost monster creature thing um, that we would tell our children about. And Isao is basically um, kind of like the head... Ugh kind of like the headless horseman and like I'm kind of headless right now because I don't have um resources or a crew or you know people to make sure that my props work the way they're supposed to and also that I could get a ride on Easter day or or you know to the ball to meet Cinderella or um or or just to 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 go on a sleigh ride because I'm a Christmas spirit um so Isao is the headless horseman without a horse, but he's headless and he's super scary. Um, he has like red hair or like a red cap or something. Um, and he's one of the various ghost creatures you'll find in the Philippines. We have very many of them because they were kind of linked to our religion. And um, we kind of lost all of like the ceremonial and philosophical parts. And now they're just like scary ghost stories to tell, to tell kids. So that's Isao. Like the reason why he's wandering around the earth actually is because he didn't get properly buried, like proper burial rites. Um, and that's a very common thing in shamanism where you'll have to make an atang or an offering to a spirit in order to pacify them. Um, so you give them what they want, you listen to them, make sure that you know their story and like what they need, um, contact their family, get their family to perform a ritual, and then like, you know, it's like the exorcist, but like Filipino style where they're going to. Um, have panset palabok at the end, you know, or like like an iftar, like after the sun goes down, I believe, in Ramadan, they could eat again. So, hooray! <laughs> um, you, you can correct me um, at some point later. Like, this is for kids or, or for adults that are like little kids on the inside, like I am. Um, yeah, don't, don't hate me because I make mistakes. I'm not perfect, you know, like... Jesus Christ forgave me for my imperfections, which is what allows me to be here with you today with a bird on my head. Because I don't care what you think. It took me all week to get over my, my, my self-issues because I have like serious self-doubt issues and I had to get the lion spirit to help me with my pride. Like, get it? Pride. And, and we're still working on it because in shamanism, when you enlist the help of the spirits, you have to work with them and let them into your heart and let them transform you and also like let them experience this world, the middle world, Lupanon, through your body so that, so that they can help you out and you can help them out and, and everyone wins because peace is all about everyone winning and no one should have to feel bad about themselves or be excluded from any kind of like 
non-religious function or family function or um, Starbucks or McDonald's. I, I don't know, just parties. Like no one should be excluded from parties for being affiliated with certain endangered creatures like um, like the Sarmanok. Uh, anyway, um, oh, so, so we have a problem when we don't know which one we're talking about, if we're talking about Isao or Isa. So Isa is actually someone from the Bible who um, was the brother of, of Yaqub, Jacob, also my rad nephew. Um, and, and he basically was smart, but yet mean to his brother, um, to his brother Esau, um, Yaqub was mean to his brother Esau and took his birthright by trading it for a bowl of lentil soup, which I love to eat because I like to eat legumes because legumes are good for me and I'm a bird. Um, so don't trade away your birthright for lentil soup. Like lentils are... So, I, I don't know, somehow associated with the lower classes, yet we need to have proteins in our diet. So, so um, we're, going to make, we're going to make it an upper class thing from now on. Like, just, like, just like all of the, the ethical proteins that don't have to use cows or um, you know, don't have to lead to the suffering of animals. Um, so Esau did that. I mean, Yaqub, Yaqub did that to Esau. And then they had to make up by forgiving each other at the end, and they did because they're brothers, they're magkapated, they have kapwa or empathy, and they have forgiveness or patawag, so they can forgive each other and still be part of the same family, even if they did wrong to each other or to themselves or to the world, or um, yeah, just for any reason. So I had other name cards that I was <laughs> that just flew away, but okay. So here we have Egypt. Egypt was a great place to be in in biblical times because they had lots of cool monuments like the Sphinx, also an obelisk, and also various um, temples to worship gods with cat heads or alligator heads. We had those too. We had we had crocodile gods just like the Egyptians. So that they were called Buaya, and they were like they were Lenawa or like ancestor animal totem spirits, like the Lenawa, like the Buaya, and also the Aguila, which is an eagle, which is mine. Um, and also other things like the Dugong, which is like kind of like a Filipino dolphin, but more like a, or more like a Filipino manatee, actually. But like there, but I, I don't, I don't have a manatee Lego or a Dugong Lego. So, um, sorry. Um, and from Egypt, we have the Duwata, Idianale. Idianale was an awesome goddess. Like, Idianale was the goddess of good deeds. And basically, uh, she's one of the, the major goddesses. Um, I hope to tell their story along with Lakapati. They were sisters. Um, Idianale um, was representative of generosity, of, of Magbibigai, of charity, of like. Um, what do you call it? Zedaka or um, I, something. Um, alms, charity, giving to the poor, to the mahirap, um, so that they can, so that they can thrive and flourish and be part of God's kingdom, like they were meant to be. Um, and Idianale basically gave, gave us cows. She would ride on a golden cow, like a, a carabao, which is like a buffalo cow of the Philippines that can swim like better than a normal cow. Um, and so they were much more useful um, and they represented wealth and kindness and, you know, the fruits of our labor, of animal labor. Um, and we should be good to cows because cows give us milk and lots of cool things. Um, so she rode on a golden ca cow and uh, gave us the gift of writing. Um, and she was also married to Dumangan. Um, Dumangan, uh, the Lord of the Harvest, um, and he was associated with animal husbandry, with like especially goats, um, also pigs, sort of, um, but like rams, sheep. You know, the, um, we we sacrificed him at the end at some point. I'm going to tell this story because I'm one of the few people that that remember or put it together. Um, did I remember it from our past? And I put it together, and I hope to do it in an entertaining format that um, hopefully doesn't offend too many people. Even though I think I'm. 
just people have a tendency to be offended by me because, um, it, sorry, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, okay, anyway, um, yeah, and so we have that. So you're just going to have to figure out from the story which one you're dealing with. If you're dealing with the biblical character or the ghost that, you know, wasn't buried properly, um, who hopefully will be reunited with his head because we need our heads once in a while. Like, I know I certainly do. Um, oh, oh, and then we have Israel. So this is where Jesus was born, in Bethlehem. So Israel is, that's how you spell it in Bibayan, and I have too much light, which is making this glare terrible. And um, I think, for some reason, I also think that this is like the name of an angel, like Israel the Almighty. Like, I, I, I swear, but well, I don't swear, that there was an angel whose name was Israel, but I, I don't really know of any stories that have him. Um, but, oh, you know what? If we change the, the E to an F or P sound, because in the Philippines, F and P are the same, because um, we consolidate certain sounds, and we don't have as many letters as you guys do. So our words are longer and more confusing, and they often mean multiple things, and you can't really figure out which one it is, like, unless if you're psychic, which, thankfully, if you're, if you're a psychic Pokemon, <laughs> like Abra or Alakazam, then you can know which word you're talking about. Um, yeah, anyway. Anyway, we change that to an F or a P, and suddenly it becomes Israfel, which sounds like sounds like something you would kind of eat that doesn't rhyme with falafel, but, but it's actually the name, that's the name of an angel. So this one is like, like Raphael, like the Ninja Turtle, but also actually an angel. He's like the horn blower who like blows the horn and it's, it's not Gabriel for once. And, um, and he's super cool. And, and that's Israfel. So Israel the Almighty. And, and then we have Indonesia. Um, what happened to my India card? I had a card that said India, but I seem to have dropped it, and India is nowhere to be found. So instead, we're going to go for Indonesia. So Indonesia is like like the Philippines down under, except they're more they're like they're like Muslim Filipinos as opposed to like Catholic Filipinos. Actually, this is a terrible analogy. They are their own people with their own customs and ways, and they were able to preserve much more of it than we were because we don't remember anything. Um, see, see, I don't mean to be offensive, but, but I just am. So we found India. Hooray. Hooray. And, and it wasn't the Bahamas and it wasn't, it wasn't Cuba or anywhere in our hemisphere. It was actual, the actual India that we, that, that, that they were trying to find where they would get silk from China. The, but okay. India where real Indians live is a totally cool place with lots of mystic caves where they probably also did shamanic rituals and they could also speak to spirits and they also had had a third gender of um <laughs> witches that were transvestites uh the, which the philippines also had but they're not hydra they're the by the babylon and i think this is a video for adults but i haven't really decided yet i just i i just i just like i just wanted to have a bird on my head um but to my niece and nephew, if you're still there, thanks for staying with us. We have more vocabulary words to go across because I did a lot of planning for this. Like, okay, so I did, I did the Biennale and I did Egypt. And, oh, now we're moving on to these guys. Okay, these guys. Uh, so I had another problem. Oh, wait, before we do that, let us turn on the light of reason. So this is Ilau, Ilau. So I should have probably done that before. Ilau, so like the light of reason and also faith. Um, in dark times, like the dark night of the soul, you will want to harvest the fruits of your labor if you were um, a super good person that was trying to help out other people and also to preserve the word of God in the Bible or Torah or um, Quran or, or anything, um, like the Book of the Dead, the, the Bardo, um, I'm drawing a blank here, but okay, 
any kind of light that helps other people and helps them to live with themselves, even if they have certain mental illnesses or um, family issues or um, codependence or addiction or um, if they if they need love for any reason, you will want to turn on the light so that they could so that you could remind them about how special they are and why we all need to have we all need to have God and meaning or meaning in our lives. Like even if you were Aristotle, you would be focusing on ethics and reason, which is totally fine since I have a lot of um, autistic friends who are atheists but are super cool and even some that are shamans too. So like in shamanism, shamanism doesn't really have hard rules. You can be a shaman if you, if you believe in shamanism if you believe in spirits, or even if you don't believe in spirits. Some some shamans don't believe in spirits, and I don't really know how that works out, but I know that they exist somewhere. But, um, yeah, just turn on your light and just, you know, be you be you and me, let me be me, and just um, hopefully one of these days I will be invited to Easter or, or Purim or something. But um, till then... Um, you know, we have our holy mission, which is to educate all of the young Filipinos and, and Americans and um, ostriches of the world to teach them about animal conservation and about loving the planet and saving the Amazon rainforest and, and the Filipino rainforest, you know, all of them. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have the Tagalog or the Tagalog. We also have other other tribes in the Philippines that also had really cool things. So the Ifugao um, basically made the the Banyuaya rice terraces, which are like huge monumental structures, like as big, bigger than the Egyptian pyramids. And they were super sacred and we worshipped a lot of gods like Lakapati of the fields um, in, in, you know, in those sacred places. And Ifugao, um, they belong to the Cordillera Mountain region, or the Bundok, which is where we get Bundok from, that it actually came from the Philippines, yo. Um, also the Itneg. The Itneg are another tribe of super cool Filipinos. Um, they are known for their their artistic um, arts and crafts, especially weaving. Like They have this craft called Ikat, um, which is weaving, but it's like also shamanic weaving, like... Like, they could actually cast spells um, based on the weaving, and, like, it was meant to do things, and, and those weavers were, were shamans as well. A lot of the, um, a lot of the artisans and just uh, special, educated, um, skilled people of the ancient Philippines were shamans, that they were all spirit workers who uh, would heal the community and basically create sacred objects um, and also preserve our traditions and stories, um, which very few of us are actually preserving, so... I actually had a point here. Like I, <laughs> I'm trying to get this thing going where I want to. I want to do the entire alphabet in Baybayin, and I kind of um, need people's moral guidance and support, and possibly even financial resources because I have to pay rent too, and um, still working on those things. But um, I would like to do the whole alphabet to preserve this wonderful language and its culture and its um, writing system for all time. Because growing up, I always, I always wanted to have. I always wanted to know an Asian language, and I always felt like like Filipinos were left out. Like, I wanted to learn Chinese once, then it was like, I gave up on it. And then I wanted to learn Japanese, and it kind of went down the same road. Like, it was just kind of hard. Then I wanted to learn Korean, and then at, at that point I was just like, can I learn Taekwondo instead? And then and then I tried that, and then I, I ran out of money. And actually, I broke my ankle. Actually, yeah, I sprained my ankle, and then... And then I'm, I, and now I'm here today to show you that even after breaking certain parts of your physical or spiritual body, that you could still come back better than ever than before. Um, in time, like in time, will be better than before, and 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 people can actually validate us on that and say yes, you were, and you're not deluding yourself. Um, so the Itneg had. Um, yeah, that something called ikat. So ikat, this is actually a beading loom, but like I don't have a real big, like real loom. Um, but that's what they would do to create their special cloths, and like they could create an abiyong, which is a veil between worlds, um, and various other 
other kinds of ritual al objects like the lambon, which is like a, a funeral blanket. Um, I, I think they have them in other cultures, cultures too. And also like the, the baneg. The baneg is um, a very significant cultural object. The Philippines is what we would sleep on, on straw mats that were woven by hand. And uh, they could do a lot of things with, with grass, with sea grass and just and, and jute and hemp. Just so many, so many wonderful arts and crafts that, are, that go way beyond my ability. Like I'm, I'm mostly like a scribe kind of a character. Like a, <clears throat> I'm a tulanon, a tulanon, um, which is a scribe shaman. Um, and basically, so the Igba, the Igba were a class of demons or a swang, um, and not very much is known about them. But they were able to shape shift. So uh, they were also what we would call sigbinan shamans. Um, Iraya. Iraya is a demon, but then I, ha I actually had a dream once where Iraya came to me and um, I got to see him before his demonic form and he um, told me that he was my ancestor, that he was Iraya the White, who um, basically had various fragmented personalities that became the seven colors of the rainbow and then if you combine them all together, it become, he becomes Iraya the White again and his demon was... Um, well, he, he was a demonio because he wasn't properly honored, and so I had to give a tang or, you know, make an offering to honor my ancestor and, and to restore um, reason again. So um, there, there are various shamanic trials that we have to undergo in order to find ourselves. Um, Inaginid is another demon, another demonio, um, or a swang. Um, and I think in one of our stories, he was the one that actually taught um, Lakambini, which was a babylon in training, um, along with um, Ifriti or if okay, uh, I don't really I have to look back on my notes. Um, he's also sometimes called Naginao, but um, Inaginid and Naginao are I, I think they're the same the same character. But but um, we'll see we'll see how things work out when 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 it's all written. Um, Inao Inao is a uh, a divining spell that you could use to see underwater or to see behind coverings. So if you're trying to look for um, something, like if you're trying to look for someone's soul, or if you're trying to, to find out what is wrong with a person if they're sick, um, you could use a spell like Inao to find out. Um, and that was used by the Mangukulam and the Manuhula, um, various Filipino shamans. Um, okay, and... Uh, so these three words are obscure but important because they, they um, remind me a lot of, of um, other religions. So the first one is Engelamon Ginagon. So this is a, a myth that is told in some of the tribes um, that there was a human um, who lived among us that was a special shaman and um, she basically... Um, she, she was a virgin, but she gave birth to one of our, our demigods, um, and her name was Ingelamon Ganagon, um, and so, the, and it was a virgin miraculous birth, and she was uh, a babaylan. Um, and then we have an Endelayag Belala. Endelayag Belala was one of our other heroes, and he was also a shaman, um, and he basically did so many good deeds on earth that when he died, um, the, the gods elevated him and he became one of the Duwata to live in Langitan or upper world, the sky world where the gods live. And, and also um, ascended beings like bodhisattvas and, and also devas and, you know, ascended masters like Zadikum, I guess. Um, and basically, uh, there, there, are other, there are other heroes we have that ascended to sky world and... Um, and they're called the Lagui Lengos, the Lengosim, Lengosim. Um, and they are kind of like really high-level mages that become become gods when they die because they had so much mastery over the magical world. Um, that was a reference to AD and D. I love that game. And then we have uh, Endelaya Gerakam Gerakum, um, and Endelaya Gerakum is another name for Endelaya Belala, but. Uh, Kerakam is interesting because it means peacemaker. So um, a logiko Kerakum is uh, someone who is a shamanic peacemaker, um, a diplomat, um, or, or a judge. 
um, sometimes, but but I, I prefer to equate it with peace. But like the, the different Filipino words are, are used in various ways. Um, they often have multiple meanings. So you technically wouldn't be wrong, but some people will say that you're not right at the same time. Um, so Endulayag Kerakam and Endulayag Belala are the same person, I believe. But um, that word means peacemaker, and this word means ascended to heaven. So it's just kind of interesting for Easter, um, which... I was really sad about because, well, since Good Friday is a holiday of sadness, but then I wanted to embrace joy, to, to, to find sim simcha, simcha, um, or, or um, just to be masaya, to be masaya, which means happy in Tagalog. Um, and so I wanted to go over by Bayan. Um, and here we have ihapud, ihapud. Um, so this refers to um, how a mangagamot would beat a pachung. A pachung is basically a created spirit. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a, um, an artificial created entity, kind of like a golem, but like purely uh, spiritual, like with no physical body. Um, and a pachung is often sent to someone to curse them. And an ihapud is a counter spell to the pachung. Um, and sometimes, sometimes like demonic energies... Our, our negative thought form entities are created by people and they have to be dispersed by a shaman or they're created by the person who themselves is haunted by it and that they have to reclaim their own shamanic power and basically become a shaman in order to defeat their demons. Um, it's, it, I don't know. It works for me. It works for my culture. Maybe it'll work for you, but probably not. But um, I, I will still have my own views regardless of what you think. Um, and then we finally have Iklog, which is so reminiscent of Easter because Easter is all about eggs and these were quail eggs from my from my 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 quail friends <laughs> my pets um, that that I loved very much um, so here like each yeah like I could just feel the energies coming from them um, when when I look at them like I think of all the happiness they gave me and I even have and then I have these other magic eggs magic eggs for oh for Huberto and Mari and Jakub and oh, they're actually made of chocolate but but anyway it log no oh, eggs were super magical and special um and symbolize life and fertility and coming back to life coming back to the spring after a harsh winter and I even had a friend told me a story about um, a Jewish friend told me a story about Kristallnacht and about how when he had to leave to be safe um, when Kristallnacht was going on that his mother gave him a hard-boiled egg to have on his way and that it was a symbol of hope and coming back to coming back home and I don't think his mother made it, but but the egg is a priceless symbol, and they are decorated in Slavic countries like the Ukraine and also Poland and also Russia um, to symbolize hope and magic. And we also did magic with eggs. I remember my my grandfather father Tata Elijo, when he would diagnose people, he would use an egg. Um, my my father Tata I, Rudy. Um, told the story about how he would use an egg to, to diagnose people and to absorb negative energies from them. And one time, like, he, this person was very, very sick. And when they cracked open the egg, like, it was, it was black on the inside because of all the negativity that it, it, had, it had absorbed. Kind of like an empath or a mangilu, an, empathic sham, an empath shaman, like a rare one, um, will absorb negative energies, and actually all energies from people. So we actually need energies... Um, in order to do, to, to, to do, to do works, um, we absorb other people's energies, and and when we're alone, we are super dispersed and and don't really have a whole lot of energy to to um, really carry us forward into finishing a task. And I'm asking people to please um, support my channel and uh, to to help me do the entire alphabet and bye bye in. Like I started with with E and I because 
A was kind of hard, and like I would have had to go over like Adam and Adan and Alan and Atang and Agimat and Ahas, which means snake, and Apple. And it, it was just, I, I don't know, for some reason I just, there wasn't a holiday that started with an A. And on the other hand, Easter started with an E, and so that's why I did that. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed our buy buy-in lesson. Um, Mari, this is for you. This is Quago, Quago Minokawa. And I have one for Jakub and Huberto as well. Um, and, and I just wanted to say that your, your uncle loves you very much. I'm not going to use my real name, but um, Tito Albulario. <laughs> Yeah, that that's my YouTube name, I guess. So I I am an herb using shaman who gathers spiritual energies like hope and faith to bring to you so that you could feel the love. And and we want to thank you for joining us today. And I was gonna play a song, but I think I went overtime, so I'm just gonna see what happens and oh no. It, uh, oh.